Maybe hit the voting booth next month. Prepare to read a lot. In addition to the political races, you'll get to decide on 12 amendments. Number six is the so-called Marcy's Law. The idea behind it is to expand victims' rights in criminal proceedings by giving them more protection from the accused. Things like being notified if the suspect gets out of jail on bond and protecting the victim's personal information. While that may sound good, major nonprofit groups like the ACLU and League of Women Voters say you should actually vote no. That's because many of the provisions in the amendment are already in the Constitution. They say the measure would just overly burden our already overloaded court system. Joining us right now to talk at both sides of this issue, Orlando attorney Whitney Bone, who is against Amendment 6. And we also have with us this morning, uh, we have Rachel Sign. She is an Orlando resident and assault victim, and she is for it. We want to thank you both for being here, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Good morning. All right. So, Whitney, let's start with you. What is it about this issue on the amendment that is problematic? Well, Amy, here's the issue. Of course, doing things that are helpful to victims and that assist victims in getting through the process of the criminal justice system and protect their rights are great and they and they sound wonderful and that and that's because they are but here's the problem not all that glitters is gold we already have protections for victims under our Florida Constitution presently and under Florida statutes and rules of criminal procedure so what you're left with is a constitutional amendment that is, is set out here with all of these new dictates for things that are supposed to be handled in the criminal justice system relative to victims rights without clear directives as to how to do it without funding tip for implementation of this and it's going to create a number of problems that ultimately are going to hurt victims more in the end in addition you've also got more than one issue in this constitutional amendment beyond victims rights you've got an issue in terms of raising the age for retirement for judges and and what's going to happen with that is that that's going to impact whether or not voters are getting to choose who their circuit court and county court judges are or if they're going to be appointed by the governor. So this amendment doesn't even have one subject in it. It's a package deal and you're not giving voters the right to choose on voting for the different issues if you're making them vote yes or no for the whole package. Rachel, I don't know how much detail you want to get into about what happened to you, but if you could talk a little bit about uh, you are a victim uh, of a crime. How did this impact you and what did you feel did not go well with that process for you that you think this law would help? Uh, well, first of all, yes, I, I am a victim of a violent crime. I've, it started with a home invasion and ended up with a sexual assault at gunpoint. Um, it was 11 years ago. He was found right away and convicted of 10 felony counts and um, sentenced to several years. Um, in my case, for Marcy's Law, uh, the, there's a certain point for privacy rights. Uh, and my right to privacy was definitely... Um, misused. He had all of my information. He had rights to my information. Um, and he used that not only to steal my identity, but to harass myself and witnesses from jail in order to try and scare us out of testifying. That was just one way. Um, another way was that he was able to use many delay tactics to extend the court process. And um, so it was a, over an 18-month trial. Um, it was, there's a lot of things in Marcy's Law that would have helped me during my case. I would have been notified when he was be, be appealing to the Supreme Court. I was not. I would have had a say in when things were sentenced so that I wouldn't have to attend a hearing on my birthday. Um, there, there's many things. And, and to the point about it already being existing in the Constitution, there's only one line that um, references crime victims' rights, whereas all of the accused are, are laid out, and the rest are in statutes, which can be easily changed. So this would just ensure that victims would have equal rights to, to the accused, not more, not less, just equal. Um, and I personally am not upset about the, the bundling. I, I understand the annoyance of bundling, but it's something the CRC does to reduce voter fatigue, so I kind of get it. But. Um, 
but honestly I'm, I'm not really upset with what it's bundled with I probably would vote for it anyway um, I just don't want victims um, or future victims to have to wait another 20 years to have this opportunity to have these rights if they ever find themselves a victim one day uh, so Whitney hearing what Rachel said in her talking about there's only one line is that true is this something that that could benefit these victims so that she didn't have to go through what she went through I understand um, what Rachel went through and you know we would hope that no one would ever have to go through what she just described but what she has described is an issue in terms of the implementation of existing constitutional amendment and as she acknowledged there are statutes and criminal rules of procedure governing notification to victims as it relates to all parts of the proceeding protecting them from having defendants contacting them and and, and, and again as she described, that was a very difficult process for her in terms of the length of time that it took, but that may have more to do with the implementation, and that's not something that's going to be changed by a constitutional amendment where we're adding vague definitions in terms of victims. Under this constitutional amendment, victims can be as broad as corporations. It can be anyone who suffered from any financial crime, and, 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 and that doesn't mean that those aren't legitimate victims in terms of having been victimized by a crime. It just means that that the implementation of this constitutional amendment in the criminal justice system is going to be problematic. It's going to set things back even further, in my opinion, because it requires things in terms of the state attorney's office having to do additional paperwork, judges having to do additional paperwork, and in it's such a large volume and all this additional litigation about who controls the timing of the case that it's going to hurt victims in the end. It's going to hurt everybody because we just don't have the means of enforcing it and that's why it's better when something like this goes through the legislature and then they have the opportunity to be reviewed on a much more um, uh, available basis by the courts then it, it's a lot harder to disturb a constitutional amendment in other words than it is a law and I understand Rachel's concerns that laws can be changed but the laws governing victims rights that we have under statute and, and rules of criminal procedure have not been disturbed um, they, they've existed for a very long time and they protect all of the things that I think that victims victims are concerned about and, and should be concerned about. So right. I would vote no on this constitutional amendment. Well, ladies, we certainly appreciate both of you coming and telling your stories and giving us your opinions. Again, the amendment is six and uh, everybody's getting these ad flyers in the mail and uh, we're seeing all the ads on television. So we appreciate you guys informing us about what might happen. Thank you both.